Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to install XPNology, a modified version of Synology's DSM to run on non-Synology hardware onto ESXi Hypervisor which is running on my HPN 54L microserver it may work on other hardware but this is specifically for the HPN 54L at this point I assume you've already put the ESXi installer onto a USB pen or CD or whatever uh, and I've started the install as shown in the video here. Additionally, sorry about the bad uh, video quality at this point, I'm using my LG G2 Android phone. Uh, once it's got ESXi installed, I can obviously access it remotely from another system, in which case then I'm using screen recording software, and the quality is much better, both sound and video. Okay. So now we're at the Welcome to the VM Aware EXI 5.5.0 installation screen. Uh, if you're running less than 4 gigs of RAM, you're going to need to do a little hack. Uh, I'm running 2, another 2 is in the post. So to do that, we just need to press Alt and F1. See there, it's asking me to log in. Log in as root, no password. Okay, now we need to cd to weasel util, uh, and we need to rm the upgrade, make sure it's the pyc file. I'm not sure if it's actually needed, but from all the guys I've seen, you need to MV the upgrade check to call it dot old then you need to copy it back I really have no idea what this actually does but apparently there's a reason for it okay now what you need to do is vi the upgrade check Press slash capitals mem min enter and now we should be taken to this line here. Press I use the arrow keys, change the four to a one, press escape, press shift and colon W exclamation mark. Enter. Press that. Q. Enter. Okay. Now it's not saved. Now we just need to kill the process, and to do that we need to ps dash c. Oh, it's more. Uh, uh, Weasel. Okay, as you can see, the process ID for Python Weasel main is three four five seven five. So kill dash nine three four five seven five. Enter. Okay, now we're back at the install. Uh, this has now bypassed the four gig minimum. Uh, there may be reasons for it, so if you have issues, I doubt you'll get support from ESXi. Okay, so enter, F11 to accept, okay, now select disk, uh, as a test bed I am using a SanDisk Extreme USB pen, uh, it's always good to use that, so anyway, yeah, so I'm going to use that one, so press enter on that. It's going to gather additional information from the selected device. It's, it already contains data, are you sure you want to erase it? Yep. I'm in the UK, uh, so I'm going to use that. I assume most people that own one of these servers is probably in the UK, because they would have bought it with the cashback offer. Anyway, uh, create a password. Press enter again. Um, 
I'm not sure I want to install. There we go, installed it. Uh, I'll pause the video and be back when it's finished. Okay, so now that the installation is complete, it's going to want to reboot the server. Make sure to remove your uh, USB that's booted this and reboot. What uh, I don't know why it does that sometimes. Some sometimes it resets what device it's booting to. It only seems to happen when you've changed which USB device it's booting. Anyway, that's an easy fix. If you have this problem, all you gotta do is press F ten here. Uh, in your BIOS password, if you've got one. Go to boot, boot device priority, and change that back to USB. Escape. Exit save changes. Okay. There we go. This takes a little while to boot, uh, especially the first time. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back when it's all booted up. Go back. Right, so once it's all booted fully, you should see that at the top. Obviously, 2 gig memory will be not the same if you have a different amount of memory. Um, and here's the more important bit. See there it says go to get the tools from 192.168.1.2 obviously that'll be different depending on your network um, but before we do that you've got the shutdown option there and the important one is the customize so press F2 log in with the password you set earlier uh, okay and then go to troubleshooting options and enable, as you can see there it's currently disabled, you need to enable it, so you press enter on it, there we go, and same for this one, there we go, now we just need to back out of that, and we're back in, right, and the rest of this can be done from a computer, so I shall switch to screen recording software, and be back. So basically, now that we're We've got ESXi installed, we navigate most of it through a remote system. Uh, you need to navigate to the IP address that the system told you to go to, which in my case was 192.168.1.2. Uh, you may get asked about a security warning, just proceed anyway, as it's perfectly safe. Uh, once you're on this page, download the FeeSphere client. FeeSphere? Spear? I can't say that word properly. <laughs> um, so download that. Right, so once that's downloaded, load uh, and and, and you've installed it, load up um, FeeSpear Client, log in, like so, uh, just ignore the warning or install the certificate, did this either way. Uh, once you're in, you should be brought up to a screen that looks a bit like this, uh, telling you for a start that you have an evaluation license which will expire in 60 days. A uh, link in the description to get directly and to that page. license key. You should copy it. Uh, go to configuration, licensed features, edit. Go to assign a, net, a new license key. P press enter key, enter your key, press OK, press OK again. And you should see at the bottom installing and decoding license complete. So there we go. Now it's all licensed. Uh, the next thing we need to do is create a data store. Uh, to do that, we go to configuration, storage, add storage, disk LUN, uh, we select the disk, we select VMFS5, um, and then basically confirm the settings. Once that's done, you'll get a, a data store as shown here. 
and there's data store and everything ready to uh, in preparation for the VMs. We need to uh, create a RDM for our uh, physical hard drive. To do that we need to make sure that we have SSH access enabled on ESXi. If you followed the guide on installing ESXi then that should already be enabled as that's part of the steps. If not then please enable it and then come back to this tutorial. Right, so now that you've got SSH enabled on your ESXi install, we need to load up PuTTY if you're on Windows. Linux users can just use SSH. Connect to the IP address of our ESXi server, in my case 192.168.1.2. Log in as root and the password you set during the ESXi install. Okay, now we're in the ESXi shell. To get a list of the disks that we can use, type ls slash dev slash disks. Uh, we can see the t10.ata st2000 and the t10.ata vb0250. The vb0250 is the default hard drive included with a HPM54L server. The st2000 is my 2 terabyte drive. I want to map the 2 terabyte drive. Firstly, let's uh, create a folder called RDM in our data store. To do this, we'll just mk directory space slash vmfs volumes uh, our data store name RDM. Okay, now we just need to create the RDM vmkfs tools space dash z space slash vmfs devices disks t10 st2000 in my case please use your own id space vmfs volumes 250 data store uh, whatever your data store is called would obviously need to be entered there instead of mine uh, rdm and then a file name in my case 2 terabyte drive 1.vmdk enter. There we go, it's done. Okay, so now we need to go back to our vSphere client, press edit settings, uh, go to add, hard disk, next, use existing virtual disk, browse, our data store, RDM, 2 terabyte drive 1, next, independent, persistent, next, finish. Okay, now for pretty much the final step, we just power the machine back on. There's the prompt. And now we will uh, connect back to it on Chrome, or whatever browser you're using. It should work. There we go. Log back in. The system is getting ready. Don't worry about that. Just leave it for about 20 seconds. Or just keep trying it. And there we go. Welcome. Okay, so there you go. There's DSM installed on your ESXi hypervisor running on your HPN 54L. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment below or on my website.